It's As It Occurs To Me, episode four. I hope you will enjoy it. Uh, if you are enjoying these, why not head to gofasterstrike.com slash A-I-O-T-M where you can buy badges, uh, you can buy a tea towel, you can buy some t-shirts, all sorts of stuff, DVDs uh, that will help us make more podcasts. Plus, you can get a subscription to a channel with extra long versions of all six episodes, even the ones that have not yet been put out on YouTube uh, and lots of other extras on there as well. But just enjoy it for free if you don't want to pay. This is here so that everyone can enjoy it, no matter how rich or poor or how smelly or not smelly. Let's watch Richard Herring's As It Occurs To Me, as nobody calls it. Thank you. This is the worst one. I've done had nine of these and this is the worst one, but this is the one we're putting out. As it occurs to me, as it occurs to me, as it occurs to me. Please welcome the man it's all occurred to, Richard Herring. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to another episode of As It Occurs To Me, The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Uh, though, <laughs> though I was inhaling nitrous oxide with Humphrey Davy the other century and uh, he called it A-Ottoma. I don't know if that's, uh, <laughs> that's catching on. He was uh, pretty cool. Banged on about his lamp all the fucking time though. What a wanker. But uh, it's episode four and we've arrived at the exact point in the series where I'm starting to think, why the fuck did we say we do six of these? Well, we, were, we could have done three, just kept 50 grand for ourselves. We'd be finished now if I'd done that and I could get on with some of my proper paid work. It's a terrible thing. Uh, why didn't I realise I'm nearly 50 years old now and I'm married with a baby, so nothing fucking happens to me anymore. I've got nothing for you. Uh, uh, the only, seriously, the only thing that's happened to me in the previous month to this one is that I recorded episode three of As It Occurs To Me. That's literally all, that's all I've done. That's the only thing I've done. I can't just do a whole show about the previous show. Or can I? <laughs> As it occurs to me, as it occurs to me, as it occurs to me. And please welcome the man it's all occurred to, it's Mr. Richard Herring! <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, hello. And welcome to episode three of As It Occurs To Me, The Search For Curly's Gold. Or, uh, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was down on uh, the Western Supermare Pier the other day and some kids were playing air hockey. Uh, they, they were calling it a Ottomus. I don't know, I don't know if that's going to... Okay, it's very much about stuff that has occurred to me either in my life or inside my brain. Uh, for example, one of the things that occurred to me this week is people say there are more questions than answers, but that, unless you include wrong answers, right? Because then... And there's loads more answers. And then there's... No, 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 stop it. We can't put these poor schmucks through this kind of thing again. They've suffered enough. Uh, some other stuff must have occurred to me this month. Think, Herring. Think. Come on. Uh, oh, yes, we were potty training my daughter this month. She's not even two years old and she's fully potty trained. Take that, parents at home. Uh, but, uh, but occasionally she wants to sit on the potty and it, when she only does a fart and not a poo which is really wasting my time. I'm a busy man. I don't have time to sit you on the potty for a fart, Phoebe, so fucking grow up. But uh, <laughs> how dare she waste my time like this? But to be fair, it is a difficult distinction to make, isn't it, between the fart and a poo? It's not one that I've completely got 100% grasp on <laughs> myself, even at the age of 49. Not, I don't call it correctly 100% of the time. It's, it's OK when it's a poo and it turns out to be a fart, but when it's a fart... <laughs> that goes the other way. Uh, you know, you'd think the more longer people were alive, the better they would get at adapting to this. But if anything, 100-year-old people are worse at it than babies. It's <laughs> even the brainiest people on the planet sometimes get this relatively simple piece of rectal admin wrong. As it occurs to me. Uh, and news just in as we go to record this show that Benjamin Barber has become the first person in Oregon to be sent to prison for revenge porn. Um, this is true. He posted videos of himself and his former partner on several pornographic websites without her consent. After the verdict, he claimed the videos were legal pornography, argued his ex had been unreasonable, saying she knew she was making porn and was then complaining about it when it was being made public. He said she had no right to be embarrassed because... It's literally unconstitutional. <laughs> <laughs> I 
And he's right. It is literally against the Constitution. I would think that a man pretending his revenge porn was actually porn was top of the list uh, of the people that the Founding Fathers were trying to protect. As it occurs to me. So, George Washington, shall we read through what we've got so far? Yes, James Madison, though I don't know why I'm naming you. Your costume clearly indicates who you are. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> uh, though I cannot tell a lie, it is mostly preamble at the moment. Uh, we, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, etc., etc., do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. So wh hmm. what, what should we put first? Well, I think the most important thing to do first is obviously to address the freedom of men who have recently broken up with a woman. And it will probably be the woman's fault. Well, it always is. It always it? is, yeah. yes. Uh, so these men must somehow be given the freedom to uh, get back at these slatternly women by, oh, I don't know, capturing moving images of sexual intercourse. How would such uh, moving pictures be shown, though? I don't understand it. Would it or would it be like one of those moving carousel things where you, you stare through them? I saw once it was a Blackamoor fellow taking off his head and then putting it back on again. It's it was a little, uh, it's a bit racist. We are the Founding Fathers. Fair point. No, I was <laughs> thinking not of some carousel, but of some uh, unimaginable device which allows you to see everything. You know, the tits, the funny, the lot, and... Uh, <laughs> And once these images had been captured by this machine, they could be entered into some kind of uh, book that could be viewed by anyone, anywhere, anywhere, at any time in the world. I don't understand how that happened. Would it be like a carrier pigeon would carry the book around, flapping around in his claws? No. No, James Madison. <laughs> I cannot tell a lie. You are a fucking dick. <laughs> yes, let's put it in. Number one, in the Constitution. Oh, there it is already. I wrote it in. <laughs> you can't be sent to prison for doing a disgusting thing with unimaginable technology in a world that we cannot possibly contemplate. See, it would be literally unconstitutional to do that because it is literally in the Constitution. Good. Uh, what's next? So I think we should come up with something that defends the rights of horrible men who uh, somehow get access to a magic machine that allows them to send out messages of 140 characters. It gives them freedom of speech to say whatever they want, but does not give anyone the freedom of speech to respond to them. Hmm. <laughs> Hello, past oh. humans. It is I, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> of course I can travel in both directions. Don't be stupid. <laughs> Oh, look, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know what's going on. This is a private meeting, and by gum, look at that hat. Isn't it? That's amazing. What an yeah, amazing yeah. hat. I thought my wooden teeth were quite the talking point. But no, 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 no. You have to listen to me. I am the president from the future. Oh, well, you, uh, you appear to be a woman. Uh, are you telling me there'll be a woman president in the future? <laughs> <laughs> no, don't worry. That will literally never happen. Oh. Oh. Uh, I am, for all intents and purposes, a man, although a man who is also a Welsh woman who is gay and born by a caesarean, but... Look at me. I'm the president. <laughs> George, you are the I'm president. The, you are but now I've got a fucking hat, all right, Madison? <laughs> no, listen, listen. It's about the Constitution. Don't put in the bit about revenge porn being okay. It's not okay. If you do it, you're clearly a bellend, and it's vital that the Constitution is not used by bellends to justify their shitty points. Oh, 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 I'm going back to the future. They literally make Biff the president did some fucking leaveable. Oh, it's smart. <laughs> Oh, oh, my God. Well, I have no idea who that man was, but uh, his impressive hat means that I think we should strike that from the Constitution. But since he mentioned nothing else of controversial nature, I suspect we're bang on with the idea about the right to bear arms. Yeah, too fucking right. Woohoo! Woohoo! Woo I'm James Madison! Uh, hashtag boycott Hamilton! <laughs> Woohoo! As it occurs to me. Really getting some good use out of the gun props from episode one and the lawyer costumes from episode two. 
We're not going to waste your money. That's what I'm saying. We're not, we're not wasting your money. Uh, anyway, so thanks to the Kickstarter donators as well for this show. People like uh, Greg Readings, who's not only a fucking idiot, because he paid for me to say that, but his name also sounds like someone failing to say greetings properly, I think. <laughs> greetings, Greg Readings. I mean, it's, uh, that's, so he's an idiot. And he's not even on email, which you absolutely have to be these days. <laughs> what a urethra. So, um... <laughs> Apparently that's an in-joke of some kind. But uh, thanks for the money, though. We, we spent it on those lawyer costumes that turned out to also be founding father costumes as well. Because <laughs> we looked into it historically, and that is what they wore, a kind of all-in-one synthetic <laughs> piece. <laughs> if you want to see extra long versions of uh, these episodes, please go to www.gofasterstripe.com slash aotoma. And you can pay £15 for a series pass. There's all sorts of extras behind the scenes stuff and longer versions of all the episodes, and they'll go up quicker, though it's too late for you. You're watching this, the shorter version now, aren't you? Uh, you can also go to Go Fast Strike and buy things like this brilliant T-shirt and uh, tea towels and all sorts of stuff if they're, uh, while stocks last. Uh, thanks also to the people here in the front row who paid extra for uh, luxury seats. Uh, and they, as a result, they get Westworld-like privilege over the sex and murder robots who make up the Aartima team. <laughs> It's Dan Tetzel, Christian Riley, and our new Girl One team member, Barbara, the horrifying rag doll conjured up from a nightmare so horrible that even she turned white. There she is. <laughs> Dan, good to have you back. Thank you. Um, you uh, how did you escape from that lift that Matthew Crosby locked you in? Well, it was a lift. I pressed the button and I got off on the other floor. Oh, so you, you could have come in for the last episode? Yes, I could have done. And Barbara, the terrifying white supremacist, white doll, <laughs> what have you been up to? Doesn't, doesn't say very much, does it? But, uh, um, sorry, I, why has Emma been replaced by a uh, terrifying rag doll? Oh, yes, we should explain to you. It's useful that you're here. When I was five, Emma used the naughty dog to make it appear like I'd shat my pants when I hadn't, so obviously I had to fire Emma, so we've replaced her with a rag doll. It's pretty clear. But... She was in that Constitution sketch. No, sure, that was you, me, and Abraham Lincoln. Of course, of course. <laughs> and um, he, he actually believes that. Um, <laughs> what's happened to my career? <laughs> I really wish I was back on Hollyoaks. <laughs> <laughs> Internet stand up sketch show with the sole aim of, of damaging Dan Tetzel's reputation so badly he will never work again. Why won't this work? Come on, Gemma, come on! You can do this! Come on, why can't you stand? Why? Come on, yes! Yes! Come on, my darling! Ah, ah, ah. No! Why can't you stand? It is all right, sir. It is not your fault. Then whose fault is it? All I wanted to do was build a functioning robot out of toasters to prove some forgotten point to my wife, and I can't even do that. You can do it, sir. You have got this far. I can talk and move and feel and make toast like loads of it. You just need to keep trying. It's no good. It's all for nothing. <laughs> Don't be so harsh on yourself. You're an amazing man. A genius. You're just saying that. I am a robot, sir. I am programmed not to lie. <sighs> Look at you lying down there. I, I can't leave you like this. You need to relax, sir. You're under so much stress. I can't relax. I have to do this. I need to show my wife how stupid she is. But maybe you just need a little time off. What are you suggesting? You know that I was built with sexual function. No, Gemma. I couldn't do that. It's not right. I'm your creator. I don't mind. And I think I am developing feelings for you. It's morally wrong. It's Asimov's fourth law of robotics. A scientist cannot fuck a robot that he has created. It's an unwritten law, but I think it's implicit. Robotic laws were made to be broken. 
N no, they weren't. They were made to protect humanity. You are blowing a definite check here. I, c I can't do this. I'm married. Sex with a robot isn't cheating. You were right about everything. Anyway, Katie will never find out. I'm sure it's right. Why did you make me with sexual functions if you did not want to use them? I don't know. You're confusing me. Am I crazy? I think this is the sanest thing you have ever done. Oh. 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 oh, brave Ooh. new world that has such people in it. Oh. It's so hot. I know. No, I mean, you're really hot. Keep oh. going! It's burning. What about Asimov's first law of robotics? Shut up, you nerd, and fuck me! Oh. Fuck me! This isn't what it looks like. Well, it is what it looks like, but I can explain. Oh, oh God. Yeah. Oh. Let's try defrost mode. No! No! Ooh. 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 Oh. oh, God. As it occurs to me. So good to see uh, I managed to press gang my own daughter uh, into that sketch uh, where she had to watch me simulating sex with a robot mace of toaster. I, I, um, I thought it would be a good idea to introduce her to the, the toaster robot before the scene in case it scared her. Uh, and she liked it a lot. And literally the first thing she did when she got there was grab the robot's funnel boobs. This is, this is a picture of... That's, that was what my daughter... She's very much definitely my child. Uh, so it's... Please let me back on the show. Who's that? What's going on? What's that? Is that Emma Kennedy in the audience? What's going on? How did you get in there? Yes, it's incredible. She managed to get a ticket. Look at the... <laughs> look at the huge demand. Shut up, Dan, or I'll get Matthew Crosby back in this. Oh, I thought he was dead. If I have to do this show with a tiny dead comedian and a dead-eyed racist ragdoll, I will do it. You see if I don't. I don't care if you do. No, please, 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 Rich, please. I mean, I, I know I've got loads of, like, really lucrative TV and and book deals, and, and 20th Century Fox have bought my show, and I'm writing a play for the National Theatre of Wales, and I've got a pointless trophy, and you haven't. And, <laughs> and, I, and I won Mastermind with a, a, probably about half the points that you lost with, and, and I won MasterChef, so that's three TV trophies that you definitely haven't got. And so even though I'm clearly far more successful in every way than you, I just want to be an AI automat. Don't, no, don't, don't, no, don't join in with, she's not part of it anymore. Do not join in with what she's saying there. We don't need you, Emma, you were just the girl one. So. How can you say that? I was intrinsic, intrinsic! You were only here because we have to have a girl one due to political correctness gone mad. That's the only reason you were here. Well, what, what about the poo story? I only included the poo stories to capture the valuable coprophile market. I, I, <laughs> My fans are perverts. Look at them. Look at them. They love that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, that, that is true. The man sitting next to me has been masturbating using his own shit as a lubricant. That's the kind of thing they do. They're awful. But, but what about when I was Subo and you were Tam Dayel? You, you must want that back again. <laughs> no, Emma, no, I don't want to do it. You've, you betrayed me. All you were in this show, all you were was eye candy. That's the only reason you were here. Eye candy? Yeah. Me? Yeah, that's, that's all you were, just luring the viewers in with your feminine charms. That was... Are, are you sure? Look, my viewers have got very low expectations. If, I, <laughs> if I'd gone for anyone even slightly better looking than you, then they would have found it unrealistic. But with you... It's believable someone as hideous as one of the fans we have here might actually get to have sex with you. So that, that was what... It, it's even more so with Barbara. They, they look at them there. Some of them have got salivating over the idea. That she's, she can't even complain. That's what they like. This please, please, please let me back in the team. No, Emma. You bought a ticket, so legally I'm not allowed to throw you out. And to be honest, we can't afford to give any refunds at this stage. <laughs> There's very little of the budget left. But you will never ever be in this show. I promise you that on Barbara's life. No! Yeah, boo-er, boo-er. <laughs> As it occurs to me. So, 
I've had some bad news uh, this a month. It looked like me and my family were set to move out of London. We'd uh, found a house in rural Hertfordshire. We made an offer on this house. It was accepted. Uh, we'd done the survey. We'd done all the lawyer stuff you have to do. It was all going well. And we started putting my daughter's name down for st stuff in the village. When suddenly, with days to go before we exchanged contracts, I got a call from the, uh, the estate agent letting me know the, van the vendors had just pulled out of the deal at the last minute. As you can imagine, I was delighted by that. That was, uh, that was a wonderful thing to happen. And I hold no grudges about that at all. To find out what went wrong, that's all I want to know. Will you please welcome the vendors of the house I was going to move into, Simon and Jessica Packman Wright, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, and, and some people won't realise this, I just want to point out, they're played by actors here tonight. Uh, it's Dan Tetzel and, and Barbara the Rag Doll. But I want to be clear, those are, those are your real names, though, aren't uh, they? Yes, yes, yes. I'm uh, Simon Packham Wright, and this is my lovely wife, Jessica. Hello, Jessica. Oh, she's, uh, she's, very, she's really got her down to a T there, actually. Much better than Emma Kennedy would have done. That's all no! I would say. Yes, well, I must say, it's very lovely of you to uh, invite us on. I, I thought there might have been, uh, after everything we went through, I thought there might have been some hard feelings. Hard feelings? No, I'm not as if I'd be annoyed by what went on. What, what could I be? What hard feelings could there be? I, there's none at all. Well, that's it's jolly good to hear. But can I just ask you, why? Why? <laughs> why did you agree that I could move into your house and buy your house and then just six weeks later decide that, you, that I couldn't? What was going on? Well, um... Uh, so, uh, I was having some vague and unspecified issues at work, yeah. and uh, we thought that we'd uh, leave things while they were unstable until maybe the new year. What you've done is totally fair enough. I yeah. mean, yes, thank you. You know, you have to just be selfish, don't you, and think of yourself and only yourself in these situations. Well, look, I, I know it must have been uh, inconvenient. <laughs> for no, you. no, no, Simon Packham Wright. It wasn't in the least bit inconvenient. I mean, we had paid out two or three thousand pounds in. Solicitors' fees and uh, well, surveyors. You know, we, and, I mean, yeah. we are sorry, obviously. Sorry enough to give me that money back? Uh, uh, well, no, no, because we are under no legal obligation no, to... Uh, no legal obligation, but, you know, the basic sense of human decency would say that you might make up for this seemingly quite arbitrary change of mind. I thought you'd invite us along to, um, you know, show us around backstage and sort of bury the hatchet, but as I, it were. I tricked you, Simon Packham, right? I, I didn't do that at all. Your wife, Jessica, is very quiet, I notice. Perhaps... Perhaps she's feeling a bit more guilty about this than you are. I don't care about your contract either, Simon Packham Wright. I don't even care about the money. What you've allowed my family and me to picture a future, a future in a home uh, you seem quite keen to sell, and now you've taken that future away. Now my daughter will grow up in a different town, with different friends. She'll have a completely different future, thanks to you. It's like the film uh, Sliding Doors. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's actually uh, Jessica and I's favourite. Do, do you know it? Yeah. It, it's brilliant, except this one should probably be called Selfish Mind-Changing Twats. <laughs> I say that's, that's a bit strong, actually. Because of you, I'm not, we might not even get out of London before the inevitable nuclear strike that is going to come and the Hunger Games that will follow it, so thanks for that. You've destroyed our dreams, you've wasted my time, and you know what? I do care about the money. It was £2,000. I could have built a whole new toaster robot for that, even better than the last one. Yeah. I'm furious with you. Yeah, I hope you don't mind me saying so, Rich, but this seems less of a, a comedy sketch and more of just, a, just an excuse to have a rant. Well, Simon Packham Wright and your wife, Jessica Packham That's Wright. Right. That's our real names. You, you, have, you have made an enemy, a very weak enemy. And, uh, <laughs> but let me lay you down an ultimatum to you. I've already given out your real names and the fact you live in Hertfordshire, but if you don't pay my money back on the next episode of this show, I'm going to give out your actual address. That, that's right. That's right, I know where you live. Because it's where I was supposed to live. You can't do that. And I'm going to encourage all 75 people who watch this show at home <laughs> to send you parcels full of shit to that address, even though they'll do it, even though it means giving up some of their beautiful shit that they can masturbate themselves with. <laughs> they'll st they've got a bit to spare and they'll send it to you, their lovely, sexy shit. The ball's in your cot, Simon Packer. Oh, well, right? we're not staying here to be insulted like this. Nope. Don't say a word. Jessica and I are leaving. Come on, Jessica. You've been warned, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> As it occurs to me, intimidating reasonably innocent people into paying back money that they have no legal requirement to return.
That was uh, Barbara there. That's her first proper acting job. Did very well. I think I think that was better than anything I've seen from Emma Kennedy. Oh, please, please let me back in AI on It's Earth. not, not going to happen. It's, shot. it's not going to happen. Please, can I do a poo story? Oh, that's true. You always did the poo stories, Emma. I can't think of anyone else. Let me... Uh, hold on. I, I'm... I'm I'll just get the, the poo story oh, book. Oh, re really? Can it, yeah, can I'll just it, get it, it out. This is it. Here it is. It's TV's Emma Kennedy's poo stories book. It's all the real poo stories she's got there. No! And Lich, I'm no! wiping my... No! It's ironic I'm wiping my... Look, no! Emma. I've been sweating quite a bit. No! Look, it's going... No! 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 I did, I did this in rehearsal and it no! really smelt on stage afterwards. No! no that's classic shit, Richard. Yeah. Do you want that? <laughs> <laughs> dirty, it's dirty down there. That's, your, it's, that's why I think of your stupid poo stories. That's stu they're rubbish. As it occurs to me. Have, have you ever thought to yourself, uh, have you ever thought to yourself, Dan, why isn't there a software suite which could help automate a care office? Rotor automation, online notes, hours, mileage, etc. Um, no, I don't think I ever have thought that. Um, why, why do you ask? You are so disabled, Dan. That's not, it's not like me. I often can't sleep at night worrying about why there isn't a software suite which could help automate a care office, rotor automation, online notes, hours, mileage, etc. Yeah, I don't think not having thought about that makes me disabled. It does, Dan. You are worse than Hitler and Ricky Gervais combined. Oi. I never said I hate disabled people. Well, you just said it then, didn't you? In that sentence, you just said, I hate disabled people, and some clever editing is going to... I'm going to expose your hate crimes. I hate disabled people. I hate disabled people. I hate disabled people. Stop saying that. I hate disabled people. Dan, that's an awful thing to say. I hate disabled people. I can't say I hate disabled people. Oh, no, now I've said I hate disabled people. You could do the I same thing to me. Stop people. saying you hate disabled people. I hate people. disabled people. Dan, stop saying that. I hate disabled people. If you do that again, there's a good chance there's a direct consequence. You be could become president of the United States of America. Yeah. It's that satire there, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> carer.io for all your care office automation needs. Mm. How many care office administrators do you think are watching this piece of shit, Richard? <laughs> <laughs> Emma Kennedy, a man paid me £250 to promote his stupid business. It's not my problem if he selected the wrong forum to do that in. If you need a software suite that's soft hard wearing and oh so sweet. That will automate your care office. Rotor automation and online notes. Hours, mileage, etc. Then might I suggest the thing you should get you is Kara.io. Yeah, it's Kara.io. It's as easy as Pio. No word of a lio. There's no need to be shy -o. Or even to cryo, just get Kara.io. In the unlikely event, you're the administrative manager in a care office. Sheep, have you any wool? Of course I fucking have. I'm a fucking sheep. Oh, nice impression of me, by the way. Bar, bar. That's what I say, is it? Racist. Because I'm a sheep. You're so offensive. I didn't mean anything by it. And my name is Simon. It's over to Christian Riley for this week's song. I'd like to honour one of the great songwriters of our time with a song, and it's a very famous songwriter, a person who risked life and limb, changed the world. He's a folk singer called Paul Hewson, and uh, this is his story. Here we go. It's the ballad of old Paul Hewson, and if you don't know the story, well, you ought to do so. Well, times were tough and times were hard. Folks were starving in Africa. One man came in the name of love. Just a singing song, writing man with a righteous tune and a righteous plan. Now y'all listen up. 
He had a big idea one stormy night. He went down to the crossroads for a bite. He said, Devil, if you're out there, hear my plea. Looks like you're winning in Africa. What's it gonna take for you to let up? Show yourself, devil. Let's make a deal. Well, the lightning cracked and the thunder rolled, and the devil appeared and it got real cold. He said, you got my attention, friend. What's your name? He said, my name's Paul Houston. I'm no friend of yours. I just came to help the poor. Now, devil, what do you say? And the devil said, Paul Houston. That's a shit name. I'm gonna call you Bono. And Bono said, I like it. It means good o in French. <laughs> the devil said, well, in Swahili, it means fuckhead. <laughs> what do you want, fuckhead? Bono said, first of all, I want to know why we both sound like Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> But after that, folks say you got all the best tunes. Well, I'm challenging you to a duel. I'll sing my song and you'll sing yours. And if you win, you take my soul. But if I win, you give me the power of rock and roll so that I can help the poor. And the devil said, yeah, that sounds like the best way to help poor people. By putting on a fucking concert. Can't see a problem with that whatsoever. You got yourself a deal, fuckhead. Here's my song. Evil, 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 evil. Evil, 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 evil. Bono said, not bad, devil. But now it's my time to shine. Love, 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 love. People are stupid and they like the word love. <laughs> Well, the devil sang, and so did Bono. Y'all know who won from all that followed. Everything he touched turned to gold. Yeah, he took the devil's rock and roll, and he used it to try and help the poor. But that's just when things started to get worse. That's right, in the years that followed, every conceivable index tracking inequality got worse. The rates of poverty, the rates of child poverty, the rates of income tax paid by Irish rock stars. All the numbers were just heading in the wrong direction. Why, it was almost like Bono would see inequality and then sing about inequality and then people would go nuts for it and give him loads of money, making themselves poorer and him richer, thereby deepening inequality. <laughs> then he'd start singing about inequality again and the whole thing would just go round and fucking round. <laughs> While there was barely enough money left in the world to fix the potholes in the roads around Bono's castle. Was so incensed by the inequality, he said to himself, I need to clear me head. Because that's what all Irish people sound like. <laughs> he said, I think I'm gonna go out on a little bicycle ride, so I am. Fiddle dee dee. <laughs> Hetty River danced over to his bike. I don't know, maybe he was pedaling too fast. Maybe he wasn't paying attention. Maybe he hit a pothole, but boom! It's the ballad of old. Paul Houston, he's got a broken hand and major contusions. Now Bono lies on a hospital bed with morphine running round his head and the devil bandaging his broken hand. He says, tell me, devil, am I dead? Am I in hell? Is this the end? The devil says, hush now, fuckhead. I gotta get you on the mend. You see, I gave you fame to destroy the faith in rock and roll as a force for change. <laughs> You've done really well, son. Now just rest. Don't feel blue in a week or two. Your hand's gonna be just like new and you can go back to doing what you do best. Bono, Bono, Bono. Blows never paid, not elected oligarch. Congratulations, Christian Riley, on being able to sing and play guitar. Uh, that's... <laughs> it was good. That's very near... Thank God we've got him. Uh, that was very nearly the end of the show. I think we can all agree that Barbara, the rag doll, has been quite a hit. TV offers are coming in from panel shows who are legally obliged to have one female panel member but don't really want her to say anything, just sit in a chair being quiet. So 
She's doing really well. Take a bow. Barbara. Barbara, I've told you do not express your political views. No! Why'd you have to ruin everything? I'm hoping I can soon replace the whole cast with puppets, which make a magical and sexy world for me. That's my... Wait, wait, Richard! Wait! You've made a terrible mistake. I've told you before, that's just a terrible rumour. It never happened. I don't know where people got it from. No, not that. Oh. Sacking me. Why? What do you mean? Now, who was it who told you that I framed you with the whole naughty dog thing? Well, I heard it from the mouth of the naughty dog himself. Right, but who told you what the naughty dog said? Well, Matthew Crosby was translating it, but he just right. said what the dog right. said. Who later attempted to murder you. Oh, come on, but he was such a nice fella apart from that. He was not well, really nice. Well, I have someone here who wants to make a confession. Who is it? Who, who's the person? I wonder who it is. Can't wait to find out. It's exciting, isn't it? What? The naughty dog? The naughty dog's here. What's that naughty dog? You have something you want to say to everyone? The last time you were here, and I accused you, TV's Emmy Kennedy, of framing Richard with the whole poo thing. I was lying. <gasps> you what? Naughty dog. What? You what a naughty, naughty dog. Naughty what a naughty dog. dog. Matthew Crosby paid you in biscuits to say it. <laughs> and the truth is that you, <laughs> TV's Emily Kennedy, <laughs> had nothing to do with it. <laughs> and I am a liar. <gasps> oh, what a naughty, dog. he's a naughty dog, isn't he? He's such a naughty, naughty dog, that dog. dog. Naughty dog. Uh, I'm sorry for doubting you, Emma. Yeah, don't I? thanks. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hate to, but... Um, uh, what if the naughty dog's lying again? Because Emma's giving it biscuits. Oh. I wouldn't do that. I mean, I think the naughty dog has proved to be untrustworthy in the past. Well, yeah, I mean, I don't think you would lie twice, though, Dan. I mean, he's a naughty dog. He's not that naughty. No. Just saying the naughty dog tends to agree with whoever's translating. That's, oh, that's all just, I'm that's, saying. That's, I, uh... that's just a coincidence. That's insane. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. I'm sorry I doubted you, Emma. I don't know what to say. I'll do anything to make this up for you. A anything? Anything. Will you let me tell a poo story? <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Yay! Do you want your book back? No, I'm not touching it ever again. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, in this month's Chattanooga, um, uh, today's uh, poo story has been sent in by uh, Jim Park. Uh, and just so you know, you, you can always uh, send me one of your poo stories. I'm always happy uh, to read them out. So this is Jim Park's poo story. My dad, also Jim, and his friend Barr joined the RAF as 17-year-olds in 1942. They lived in Hamilton, near Glasgow. Dad and Barr were required to attend a few days' training in London. After the training, they had an extra day in London to enjoy themselves, and it was arranged that they would stay at Barr's uncle and aunt, who lived in London. They proceeded to get catastrophically pissed at an RAF club. My dad mentioned that a friendly Irishman insisted on getting them drinks all night. They latterly discovered he was producing pints of beer by gathering up slops from dead glasses at other tables. They eventually found their way home and crept quietly into Barr's uncle's house at 3 a.m., stumbling around in the darkness and found their way to their room upstairs. It was at this point that Barr had an overwhelming and immediate urge to have a shit. <laughs> he didn't want to switch on the lights and risk awakening his aunt and uncle, but was unable to work out where the toilet was. In desperation and panic, he opened a window stuck his bum out and had a massive bowel movement out into the night air. <laughs> the next day, Dad and Barr emerged into the back garden with horrific hangovers. To their horror, the sight which greeted them was Barr's uncle with a garden hose cleaning a copious quantity of shit off the roof of his conservatory. <laughs> Bar 
Paul's uncle was a classically unflappable English gent, and all he said was glorious understatement. Heavy night, lads. <laughs> and that is Jim Park's poo story. So that's it. That's all from AI Ultima this month. We're very proud of what we've done. See you next time. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>